Hi, I'm Ellen Gormley and welcome back to my channel. Theo is already poking his head in today, but we are going to be looking at pattern 77 from this book, this Japanese stitch dictionary. It just so happens, coincidentally, that I wanted to do a three-part series on pineapples and one of you recommended and suggested perhaps I do number 77 because you were having trouble with it. Well, guess what? I was planning to do it anyway. Because remember, last week I did a beginner pineapple uh, video. We're going to do number 77 today, which is slightly more complicated. And then I have a doozy for you on the next video. So I've got another bigger one on the next one. So hang in there with me with this Learn to Crochet Pineapple series. This is number two out of three. So let's get started, shall we? Theo is up on the table, so hopefully he won't shake it too much. Like I did with pineapple number one, the beginner pineapple, I made you the swatch so that you can clearly see the pineapple shape. And then I also did the swatch in multicolor so that we can look at row by row what it looks like. So I have the two swatches here in front of me and we are going to follow the symbol diagram together while we stitch. So I know that last time some of you had trouble juggling between looking at the swatches and looking at the diagram. So I will try and go slow, but also you can also um, pause, rewind, and rewatch this as many times as is necessary. So this pattern is a repeat of 16. It takes 16 stitches, 16 chains, to make one repeat of the pattern. Now, in addition to the 16, so for every set you want, you have to do use 16 chains. But for the beginning, you need 16, a multiple of 16, 16 any number of times, plus one, two, three, four. So 16, plus four, a multiple of 16, 16 as many times as it takes to get the width of your project, plus four more. So for this swatch here, I uh, chained 36, which was 16 twice to make 32, plus four more. <laughs> so we've got Theo, who's jumping in on the table. I do have a new camera tripod. It's a little less jostly, but when you have a cat jumping up on the table, it still shakes. Anyway, so we are going to chain together 36. 36, so a multiple of 16 twice, one, two, two repeats, plus the ending and beginning. So let's fast forward to chaining 36. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Wait till the next pattern, friends. <laughs> twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six. I've already begun swatching the, the next more advanced pineapple, and it's like a repeat of like 24. So we're going to have a lot of fun. That's going to be a long video. Okay, so on our symbol diagram, this again is a uh, diagram where it starts over here and works this way and then works back. So whether you are right-handed or left-handed, it does not matter. We're still going to follow the instructions and that's why symbol diagrams are so awesome. So I've chained 36 and in the one, two, three, fourth chain from the hook, I'm going to place two double crochets. And that is because I am a right-hander, that puts us over here. So I, uh, your, my indulgence, please, lefties, I will flip this video for you so that you can see it as well. But we need to get these two double crochets in the corner. And you can see from the diagram that we're going to have a group of basically three double crochets because that chain three counts as, the, as one of them. And then we'll do the work. And then we'll have a column of this shell, which is two double crochets, two chains, and two double crochets all in one stitch. And then another grouping of pattern. 
and then we'll end with three double crochets. I love this pattern because it's the same at the beginning and end of every row, and you've got this neat little stacked column of stitches in the middle, so it really helps you memorize the pattern. So in the one, two, three, fourth chain from the hook, I am placing two double crochets. I love patterns that are predictable <laughs> so that they're easier to memorize. So we've got our uh, two double crochets in that fourth chain from the hook. We're going to chain two and we're going to skip one, two, three, four chains. So chain two, one, two, skip one, two, three, four. And in the next one, we're going to place a double crochet. Then it says to chain one right there, and we're going to skip one, two chains. And in the next chain, we're going to place this V stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet. So we're skipping one, two. And in the next chain, we will do the V grouping, which in this case is double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Now I know it's a double crochet because it has one yarn over on the diagram here. So one yarn over, is it what a double crochet is? Chain one, skip one, two chains. So chain one, skip one, two chains, one, two. And in the next one, we are placing another double crochet. It's a one little hash mark for the yarn over. Chain two, skip one, two, three, four this time. One, two, three, four, skipping, and then we'll do this nice column of, you know what, I let me double check because I know that the diagram looked a little wonky to me because the double crochet looks like it's in between stitches, so I did have to fiddle with it. So let me look at my swatch and figure out how I did it because it, we're looking at this space here on the on the pink swatch and on the multicolored swatch we're looking at this space here and it was one two three yes there is four that I skipped there one two three four and in the next one and we skipped one two three four okay it just looked like the symbol diagram was a little wonky with it was hard to tell where that double crochet was like in which stitch so my swatch helped me figure that out and so sometimes that's what you'll have to do <laughs> you'll have to just figure it out by practice trial and error we're chaining one and then we're placing another v grouping in the third skipping two and then in the third chain so swatching is so critical just to learning the pattern and making sure you understand. So even a pattern without words, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly how many and like where that double crochet is. It's clearly in this chain here, but over here, it looks like it was sort of in between chains. So you kind of have to just play around and make sure that you've got it ready to go. So I'm skipping one, two, and putting a double crochet in the next one. Also, because patterns, crochet patterns, tend to be symmetrical, like I can look at this grouping over here and compare it to this one. So if this one is confusing to me, if I look over here, I might get some clues or some clarity. So we are going to chain two and skip one, two, three, four. And hopefully we, oh, we've got more. Did I mess up? So we've got the, oh, I didn't do that. See, I already skipped that part. So I did a, uh, double crochet and then the v-stitch and then the double crochet and then here should have been the start of this so I'm gonna rip back and do that so to rip back I'm just gonna slowly pull out and get back to where I wanted to be and I wanted to do this column here so that was two double crochets I got the talk in and lost track of where I was chain two and then two double crochets in the same spot did you notice me doing that, my friends? You say, no, no, Ellen, stop. Back the truck up. You missed a spot. Were you yelling at the, at the camera? Were you yelling at the TV? One, two, three, four. Saying, no, don't do it. Don't go in there. So let's get started. Get Make sure that we're back on track. So now we have our pretty column started here. 
and these are lining up. Here's the double crochet, here's the V lining up, here's a double crochet lining up, here's our grouping lining up. So I love symbol diagrams for this reason, that you can clearly compare it to your diagram and know that you are good to go. So I did my chain one, I'm skipping um, one, two, I tend to just gravitate towards reading <laughs> the way I stitch rather than the way it's written. So I am a righty, but this is a lefty diagram, but that's okay because it's really the same. I hope that makes sense to you. So essentially I'm over here. So I made my grouping, I chained two, I did a double crochet, I chained one. Now it's ready for a V-stitch, skipping two. Clear as mud, right? You can do it. If it matches the diagram, you are good to go. And if it doesn't match the diagram, see if you like your way better. And if your way better works, keep doing it. And maybe you have put your own stamp on the pattern. Okay, so now we should be at this point here, chain two and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and three double crochets in the last stitch. So we are right back on track where we need to be. It is pretty critical, friends, to get this first row correct, to get the foundation. Now, normally you hear me say, ah, just fudge it. It's like not that big of a deal. It's not brain surgery. But when it comes to a successful pattern, the first row is pretty important. <laughs> so like we have the first row done. It matches our diagram. It matches my swatch. You can see it down here. It matches my swatch. It matches my green swatch over here. So we are good to go. Now we're going to work on the blue row, the second row of the pattern right here, and the blue row is what we're doing now. I think it's easier to see what I'm doing when you can see the multicolors. So we're going to be, I'm moving my swatches over just a little bit so you can see. Remember, we are starting and ending every row exactly the same, which I love. Thank you, designer, for doing it this way. So we are chaining one, two, three. It counts as the first double crochet. We're placing two double crochets in that same first double crochet for a grouping of three. There will be three double crochets on the front end and back end of each row across. Okay, then it says chain one, two, three. And then in this chain two spot, so we're gonna chain one, two, three. We're skipping all of this stuff and skipping right to this chain two spot in between the, um, in the V stitch and we're placing one, two, three, four, five. And here comes Theo as I double crochet one, two. Theo the cat likes to make cameo appearances and he is now grabbing my teal colored yarn. <laughs> so let's see if I can grab that away from him before he steals it. Here comes my cat thief. Here comes my cat thief. And I have my five double crochets. After that, there's one, two, three. One, Theo, honey. I can't stitch with you grabbing the yarn. It messes with my tension. One, two, three. And then we will do another. We're, this column is always the same. Can you see visually just by glancing at it that it's always the same straight up? So that's always nice when we get to that spot. We are skipping this double crochet, nothing in it. So we're skipping this double crochet here. And in the chain two space of that column, we are doing the exact same thing we will do for every row, which is two double crochets, two chains, two double crochets in that column, that nice neat column that goes all the way up this, um, can you see it? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's over here, right there, this nice column of stitches. Okay, juggling, juggling. All right, so we did the two double crochets, chain two, do two double crochets for the column, and now we are still on the second row. We're going to chain one, two, three, and do another five double crochets. One, two, three, and Theo's going to jump off the table. Maybe, <laughs> hopefully. We're skipping all of these stitches and going right to that V stitch again because there is no stitches. It, it spans a gap like a, um, like a rope ladder all the way across these stitches. No feet down on that. It's a rope swinging ladder there that does not have an anchor. So one, 
two, three, four, five. And I know it's five stitches because I counted them. And Theo, you're falling off the table. If you're going to at least fall off the table, then at least let people know you're here by showing yourself in the frame. Otherwise, it just looks like an earthquake all the time. One, two, three. One, two, three. See? And then three double crochets. We're skipping. We've got another rope ladder where we're not doing anything. And we'll put three double crochets in that turning chain of the previous row. One. Two. Two, I hear Hobie. I hear Hobie the dog's feet running up the stairs. One, two, three. So here we are. We have row one and two done. Boy, wasn't that row easy. It totally was. It matches my diagram. It matches the blue section. It matches the pink. So I don't know what that noise was. Who knows what the dog's getting into. The beginning and the ending of each row is exactly the same. So you know what to do. Chain one, two, three. Two more double crochets in that first stitch so that we have a three double crochet grouping. See it? And now we're on row three, which is the orange row. Okay, so we just made this three double crochet grouping. We are now going to chain one and then make these. So let's chain one and talk about these a little bit more. So in each double crochet, we're placing a, you know what that is? Do you know what that symbol is there? That little pointy oval thing? There's little hash marks up here. I'll bring it closer. Little hash marks here, which indicate that it is a one yarn over. So it's starting off, off as if to double crochet, but it's got a hat on it up here and a bowed legs. So that's a cluster. That's a two, double crochet cluster in a double crochet with a chain one in between. So we're going to do that in each of the five double crochets. So a cluster, remember, yarn over and insert the hook as if to double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook and stop. Then do it again, yarn over, insert the hook in the same spot because it is a cluster, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook and stop. And because there's just two of them in this grouping, now we will yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook, putting the hat on top. Okay, so chain one, because it tells us to chain one in between each of these groupings, we're doing this group of five orange things here. We're on the orange row right now. And on this pattern, we're looking right here. This is where we are on this pattern. It's the exact same pattern, looks vastly different in one color than multiple colors, but this I think shows you like where we are in the pattern, and this shows you the relationship of all the stitches together to create this lovely pineapple shape. Okay, so back to our two double crochet clusters. We are going to do two double crochet, a double crochet, a two double crochet cluster in each double crochet of this double crochet five group. Okay, easy for me to say. Separated by a chain one. So we now have three going. One, two, three. Let's do the next two more slowly. Yarn over, insert the hook in the next double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook and leave it there. Now in that same exact spot, we will do the same exact thing. Yarn over and insert the hook in that same stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook and leave it there. Now we're gonna tie it all together as a cluster would be with a hat on top by yarning over and pulling through all the loops on the hook. Chain one, because that's what the diagram tells us. There's a chain, chain one in between each of these clusters. We have one more cluster to go. We have one, two, three, four so far. Okay, have you seen those crazy, like, what do you call them? They're not lawn chairs, but they're like beach chairs that are inflatable and they look like these. They look like double crochet clusters, like put together. It looks like this and you like sit in it and it's like, it's like inflatable. Anyway, that's what this <laughs> two double crochet cluster reminds me of. After these clusters, there's a chain one. And guess what? We get to skip the chains in between there's nothing in there, and we're gonna do our column of two double crochets completed. So complete one, complete another one, and you can tell that they're completed and not clusters because they are completely separate. They're not touching, they're not paired, they're not twins, they're not conjoined. They are completely separate, and they each have their own hat. 
okay? They had, had their own hat, their own little top on this top of each stitch, indicating that the stitch is completed. So after we do that column that is the same for every row, we're gonna chain one and do that whole sequence again. Doing our rope ladder, we're skipping all of that because guess what? All of these clusters are so fat. When you put them in there, it's so fat, it's so wide that um, that's a really wide piece. So it's gonna take up a lot of space. That's why there's only one chain on either end of it rather than multiple chains. So let's do another grouping another repeat of the clusters, the two double crochet clusters separated by a chain one, and one cluster will go in each double crochet so that we have five clusters total, even though it looks like 10 stitches because they are paired like twins, like a um, burlap sack potato sack race, is that what they call it? Three-legged race, it looks like a three-legged race where they kind of share one foothold. Okay, all right, and then chain one because that's what the pattern tells us to do. And then at the end, we've got our the same thing that we have at the beginning and end of every row, which is three double crochets in that last turning chain. Hey, we're making progress. I hope you're having fun with this pineapple series. I really sensed that a lot of you wanted something a little bit more um, complicated than what I had been teaching. So never fear, I'm going to keep teaching Tunisian and simple stuff as well, but I wanted to give some of you advanced stitchers some play time as well. So now that we have finished the orange row, we're gonna do the green row. The green row is row four. The green row on the pink swatch is right here. This, the, the row above the cluster, the peacock cluster of uh, potato sack racers. So again, the beginning and end of every row is one, two, three, and then two double crochets in the first stitch to make a grouping of three, the little book end on either end of the piece. So here we have one, two, three chains, one, two, three chains, and then we've got, we're gonna have loops, chain five loops, okay? So let's get to it. One, two, three. Single crochet in between the next two clusters. So find my clusters and single crochet in between them. One, two, three, four, five, because that's what that little loop is. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. And on this part of the diagram, it actually gives you the numeral five. So you don't have to actually count the little oval chains, but it's right there. But you can also count the little oval chains. It's no big deal. And then single crochet between the next clusters. One, two, three, four, five chains. Single crochet between the next set of clusters. One, two, three, four, five, because we're doing this three times. See, one, two, three. And then single crochet between the next clusters right there. And then one, two, three. Here's the one, two, three. And then our usual column there in the middle of the piece, which is two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. All right. So are you enjoying this pineapple series? I hope so. So there will be one more pattern in this series, I hope. And then um, we'll move on. One, two, three chains. And then we'll do that whole series again of single crochet between the clusters. One, two, three, four, five chains. Single crochet between the clusters. One, two, three, four, five across until you have one, two, three, oops, I dropped it, three, four, five. We have loops. Okay, so we have one, two, three, chain five loops there. And then after that, we have one, two, three, two, three. And then we'll put our book end of three double crochets in the turning chain of the final stitch, the turning chain of the row below putting our bookend of the double crochet three grouping. And here's where we are. Look at that, it's coming together so fast. 
Don't you love the crochet lace? I know I do. Okay, so we finished the green row, and now we're going to do this blue row. So we've got one, two loops of chain five, it looks like, and then a space, and then our usual column of stitches. Over here on the pink swatch, here is where we are. One, two, chain five spaces, and some chains, and then a column. So we can totally do this. On the diagram, we're looking at this row here. So our usual chain three grouping, chain three, only one, two, chain five loops this time, and then across. So pineapples are really cool. If you'd missed the first um, episode, <laughs> if you will, or installment of the pineapple series um, that came out on February the 5th of 2020, then you can go back and watch that and see that I talked a little bit more about like the logic of pineapples. So um, let me tell, tell you what I'm doing here. So I did my three grouping, chain three, because the diagram said chain three. Then I single crocheted in the next ch chain five loop, which was right here. Then I'm going to chain one, two, three, four, five. It gave me the numeral five, but I could also just count the loops. And then single crochet in the next chain five space. And then chain one, two, three, four, five single crochet in the next chain five space. See, this is where we are. And after I've done that chain five loop twice and I single crocheted in the next chain five space, I have a chain three and then make our column in the middle. So one, two, three, and make our column right here. Our column is building blocks right on top of each other. And in this case, the block that goes on top of each other like a brick is two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and then chain three. One, two, three, and here's the chain three where we are. Single crochet in the chain five loop. So we're skipping all of the things in between. Single crocheting in the chain five loop. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five single crochet in the next chain five loop one two three four five complete that second chain five loop anchor it with a double a single crochet in the next chain five so here we are this is where we are and then after that we chain three and finish off our bookend i think with lace the hardest part is figuring out the beginnings and endings of each row. And when it comes to memorizing a pattern, I feel like the hardest part to memorize is how a row, each row starts and finishes when each row starts and finishes differently. But look at this, we are making great progress. It looks just like our pink swatch. It looks just like our multicolored swatch. We are now working on row orange. We have essentially two rows to go. We have orange and green to go. And then the blue is the same as the green, but instead of working in chains like we did for the green, it works in the row before it, which is here. Okay, so we are now on the orange row. We've got our bookends. So we're making good progress, friends. I hope you're having fun with this. This in itself right here is probably 10 inches Maybe, I don't know. Okay, my paper is eight and a half inches. So it's, it's you know, nine and a half inches or so. This would make a fantastic scarf, exactly like this. Even without changing the multiple, only chaining 36 and doing it exactly like we are doing, this would make a fantastic scarf. Wouldn't that make a gorgeous scarf? So, hey, give it a try. Okay, so I have a worsted weight yarn, by the way, and this is a size I hook because you know I'm known for that. But you could absolutely do this in DK weight yarn or fingering weight yarn or tiny, tiny, tiny thread weight yarn and um, make with a smaller hook each time and make a smaller piece. If you want to go bigger, you could go super bulky yarn with a bigger hook and you'd have a bigger scarf. But gosh, it would be beautiful, especially all in one color. Okay, so we are now, again, like I said, we are now on the orange row, which is right here. It's just 
one chain five loop this time that straddles the two before it and lots of chain spaces. So we've done the uh, double crochet three grouping. We're gonna chain one, two, three. Single crochet, you guessed it, in the chain five loop because that seems to be a pattern for this pattern. This is a, a, a norm for this pattern, three, four, five chain five, and they gave us a numeral over here, so we know it's chain five. We can also count the ovals. Single crochet in the next chain five space. And then one, two, three. And then we will do our column of stitches. And Theo is <laughs> grabbing the cord of my camera there, which is fine. And here he comes up onto the table to make yet another appearance. So we're doing our block, our column in the middle. Here comes Theo. Oop, oop, here he comes. It's funny how he does a good job of not getting in the camera, but just shaking the table. So you guys do, probably don't even believe me, but he is up here on the table with me. Chain one, two, three on the other side of our tower of stitches. And then we will skip everything underneath our um, hanging rope ladder here and single crochet in the chain five space. Chain one, two, three, four, five. Thank you, Theo, for coming into the frame so that they do not think I am crazy. One, two, three, four, five. Well, maybe I'm crazy, but not about this. And then single crochet in the chain five loop below it. One, two, three is where we are now. And three double crochets in that final turning chain of the previous row. And here it goes jumping down so that we have the book end on the opposite end of the pattern. Okay, remember my new book, One Skein Crochet, is now out on um, Amazon and on my website, ellengormley.com. So here, we're rounding it out, it's looking great. And we really only have two rows to go, one row for real, and then one row is a repeat of the foundation row. And then we'll just repeat this sequence of several rows again. Oh, more than that. Oh, I lied. Look, so we have the pineapple is done here, but then there's these rows of grid here. So it's actually a 10 row repeat. And we have done one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So we're getting there, but it's okay. Hang in there with me. I know it's a long video, but I appreciate it. And I think um, hopefully some of you are enjoying the intricacies of pineapples and challenging yourself a little bit because really it's not hard. These are all stitches you know. Double crochet, single crochet, and chains. That's it. It's absolutely just a matter of paying attention to the diagram. Here is the book. Go buy the book. Um, so I'm advertising for the book. I'm not getting a kickback. I'm not getting anything, but I want you to go buy the book. It's really a lot of fun. So here we are with the next row. So we finished the orange row. It's rainy and nasty outside. So Patrick just got back home and the dog is freaking. So that's what that's about. So after we have finished this row, we're going to do the groupings chain five, single crochet, chain five, the column across. So very easy here. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet in the middle chain five grouping. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here we are. And then we're already at the column. This is how easy this particular row is very lacy. This is right here on the pink swatch. On the multicolored swatch, we are working on the green. We are working on the green. Okay, so we are making our column now. So our usual two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet in this loop here, which is at the top of this pineapple. One, two, three, four, five. 
one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I dropped it. Five. And then our bookend again. So nice, easy, quick palette cleanser of a row where you don't have to think quite so hard compared to some of the other rows. Okay, so the next row we're doing is the blue row. The blue row is here. Again, looks really easy. Instead of single crochet, we're doing double crochet. It's the exact same thing, do you see it? So the green row is just a single crochet in the loop and the blue row is just a double crochet in the single crochet, but it's the same thing. So this should, row should be really quick. And look, here it is on the diagram. So double crochet in the single crochet and lots of chain lacy space-ness. <laughs> one, two, three. Our book end is one, two, three double crochets. The chain three, turning chain three counted as one of them. One, two, three, four, five. Instead of a double, single crochet, we're gonna do a double crochet right here in this single crochet right there. Do a double crochet there. One, two, three, four, five. And then we will do our column. Our bricks right on top of each other, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. So when you have a really lacy pattern like this, it's really fun. <laughs> to be able to have the parts where you know you're right. <laughs> you know that middle column of stitches is gonna be the same every time. And you know the book end on either end is always gonna be the same. And that is kind of a relief when you are working hard and concentrating on a pattern. And uh, it's nice to be able to have those moments of rest where your brain doesn't have to work quite as hard to balance out the challenge with the relief. Isn't that true in life too? Every time we have challenge, we wanna have some relief. You need to balance. If you have too much relief, then you need a little challenge. Okay, here we go. Looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so we're now working on the orange row. The orange row is the one with the little like spikes of double crochets. And so we're right, I'll bring it down a little bit, right here on this row of the diagram. And then we are back to the beginning with the one V, one V, double crochet, double crochet. You see it? It's the same. So this is the final row of the repeating pattern. So one, two, three, make our book end at the beginning of our row. Oh, did I drop it? I did. That's all right, just pick it back up again. One, two, I count two. I need to make three, there's the third. Place two more double crochets so that there is a total of three. And then we will follow the diagram, which is two, chain two, double crochet. And look at this, I'm going to go ahead and put this double crochet in the middle chain of the chain five. So I'm gonna chain two. And usually I would say just throw it in the space, it doesn't really matter. But for this pattern, I did actually put it in the third chain of the chain five because I chained one and then the next double crochet goes in the chain right before the double crochet. So I'm going to count my chains, one, two, three, four, five, and in the third one is where I am going to place my double crochet because it's such a precise pattern with the pineapples that I wanted to stay precise. So chain one, because it says chain one, and then double crochet in the chain that's right before the, um, double crochet post of the row below. So this is what it looks like. Okay, so then we're gonna chain one. We're actually skipping the double crochet post, putting a double crochet in the next chain after the double crochet. Chain one. Double crochet, remember in the middle, the third chain of the one, two, three, four, five chains. So right in there is where I will put the next double crochet. So this is the only row where I felt like I really wanted to be careful and precise. And then chain one, 
and then so it's actually a chain two and then we'll do the um, column so I'm going to add one more chain to this because it's a chain two and then our column of bricks so two double crochets chain two two double crochets and then we get to do this sequence again because we made a double of this pattern so after the um brick thing <laughs> in this column the spine we're going to skip one two and in that third one um or the middle one of the five it's one two the third one we are going to go ahead and double crochet so one two in the middle one right there if you've hung in with me here this long, please hit the like button on this video. I really appreciate it. We're going to place chain one and place a double crochet in the chain right before the double crochet of the row previous. If you've made it this long, you might as well hit the like button. It doesn't cost you anything, and I certainly appreciate it. Okay, and then one right after the post right there. chain one. These are all stitches you know, friends. And then skip one stitch and place it in the third chain of that chain five space. And then we will chain two and then three double crochets in the bookend, the final bookend of that row. And then, hey, let's take a look at it and pat ourselves on the back for our success and hanging in there this long. Step by step, you totally can do this. Okay, look how gorgeous. That is the complete pattern. That is the entire repeat. So this next row is this first row. So you can do this, you totally can do this. I hope you have enjoyed this pineapple, this episode two of the pineapple series. And um, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, and I hope to see what you make. Let me know. Send me to your Instagram so I can see your finished projects. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me.